in focus. Am I in focus? It's the shot centered. Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here to let you know that AmpSims and using AmpSims might be holding your productions back from sounding professional. Now, before I dive into today's topic and today's video, I wanna let you know that in reality, we actually live in the best time in human history to be a hard rock or metal engineer, specifically a home studio, hard rock or metal engineer or producer or self-recordist. And it all comes down to these amazing tools called AmpSims and MIDI drums. The problem is that so many of us make the exact same mistakes over and over and over again when using these tools. And they hold so many of us back from releasing and finishing our music. And I don't want this for you. And because of this, I've put together a guide called the MIDI drums and amp sims production checklist. The checklist clearly highlights the mistakes that so many of us make. And by downloading and reviewing the guide, you'll be able to skip over these mistakes so you can get right to producing great sounding music in your home studio, regardless of the MIDI drums and amp sims that you're using within your DAW. The MIDI drums and amp sims production checklist is absolutely free right now. And you can have direct access by clicking the link below in this video's description. Now, even though I think that amp sims might be holding you back from releasing and producing the music that you really want, I just wanna let you know this. I just gotta say that I absolutely love amp sims. As a matter of fact, most of my productions feature amp sims to one extent or another. Amp sims are super convenient. You could record and produce your music anywhere without making a lot of noise. And even though I love using real amps, I love micing up real amps, I love finding that sweet spot with the microphone on the cab, amp sims sound just as good as real amps. People think they don't, but believe me, you cannot tell a well-produced track that utilizes amp sims versus real amps. Anyone who thinks that is absolutely full of shit. Amp sims are amazing. So then why am I sitting here recording a video telling you that amp sims are holding your productions back from sounding professional? Well, there are a few reasons and hopefully this video will get you thinking so you could bypass these issues and produce the results that you really are after, which is recordings and mixes of your music that sound professional, like your favorite records. The first reason why amp sims are holding you back is that they can be tweaked endlessly. Now for most pros, this really isn't an issue because pros have systems and workflows that they follow and they follow their gut instinct and they don't tend to overthink things. If you're a beginner or a home studio owner that maybe tinkers within your DAW, it's so easy to overly obsess over details that really don't matter. And amp sims, because they sit live as an insert on your track, can be tweaked endlessly. And this is not good, believe me. I get emails constantly from my audience saying that, you know, I haven't released a song Song in two years because I can't get my guitar tone right. I try Neural DSP, Line 6, I've bought Axe Effects's Kempers, and my tone just doesn't sound professional. Well, here's the thing. There are professional records out there that utilize all of those tools that sound phenomenal. The issue is if you do not have a workflow or if you don't have experience, it's easy to overthink your amp settings. And again, amp sims allow you to not commit and you can overly tweak things to the point where you've completely lost perspective and you don't get anything done in your studio. I see this a lot in the audio community and it holds so many people back. When you're using real amps, you have to commit. You mic up an amp, you record the track to your DAW, and you can't really change the tone outside of EQ. Now for me, I actually like that I could tweak amp sims because I have self-control and I have a lot of experience and I understand the value of commitment when producing music. So for me, amp sims are actually way more convenient than live amps, but if you're starting out, they could definitely hold you back. Now don't worry, at the end of the video, I'm gonna to explain to you what you could do to get over this issue. The other thing that drives me absolutely insane and actually kind of gives me anxiety, to be completely honest with you, is that there are just too many damn options when it comes to amp sims. Every five seconds, someone's saying, hey Bobby, have you checked out Gojira's archetype? Hey Bobby, have you heard the new Line 6 Helix update? Hey Bobby, there's this free amp sim and that free amp sim. Have you checked it out? Here's the thing, it doesn't matter what you use. You could produce 100% professional results 
with free amp sims like the Amped Roots by ML Sound Lab. I'm not saying to not experiment and not try different amp sims, but you shouldn't be waiting to release your music because you're endlessly switching between different amp sims to find the perfect tone. Number one, there is no such thing as the perfect guitar tone. And number two, your guitar tone does not matter as much as you think. You know what matters? The song, how good the song is, how well your song is arranged and produced, how good your mix is. For the longest time, I only used two amp sims, the free one that came with Pro Tools and Sans Amp, and also the X50 by TSE Audio. And I would get people asking me all the time, man, your guitar tone is so sick, what are you using? And then I'll tell them the amp sim that I'm using, and they're like, oh, that's such a dated plugin. I'm like, that makes no sense. You just told me that you love my guitar tone, and now you're telling me that it's a dated plugin. That's how ingrained and powerful this marketing is to home studio owners. And again, nothing against these companies. These tools are absolutely amazing and I wish I would have had them when I first got into metal production. But the overwhelm and the overall paralysis by analysis when it comes to these different options really, really holds a lot of people back. And again, I see and hear it every single day when interacting with my audience. And I don't want this for you. I want you to release your music. Guitar tone's important. Believe me, I'm a guitar player. I love talking about guitar tone. I love messing with guitar tone. I love dialing in guitar tone, especially when I work with artists in the studio, but at the end of the day, it's not as important as you think. Picking aggressively, playing tight, editing, producing a good song, way more important than what amps and plugin you're using. Believe me. So the question is, what do you do about this issue, especially if you cannot control yourself? Here's what I recommend. Pick an amp sim, find a decent impulse response that sounds good at the source, and just record your music and don't overthink it. Yes, try different amp sims, but in the back of your mind, always remind yourself that the amp sim is irrelevant. It's your playing, your editing, and your producing that matters most. And by the way, if you don't have an impulse response that you're happy with, you can download my free impulse response Octopack. It comes loaded with eight impulse responses, four different microphones, two mic placements per microphone. If you want an awesome sounding, great solid IR, try the SM57s in that pack. I use them on most of my productions. And tip number two is to print your amp sims down to physical audio within your DAW so you're not constantly tempted to go back and tweak the amp sim within the mix. Here's what I do. When a song is fully produced, when I'm using amp sims with a band, I take the amp sim, print it down to audio, and I mix the recorded guitar tone just as if it were a live tube amp. This is great because it actually saves on CPU and it gets me out of the mindset of tone tweaking and more in the mindset of mixing and finishing the production and mix. So there you have it. It's a video I've been wanting to make for a while because it kind of saddens me, to be honest with you. I actually had a guy comment on a video last week on YouTube telling me that he did not write or record music for an entire year because he spent all of his time messing with guitar tone. I gotta just say, this is a complete waste of time. Again, I'm a guitar player, I've been there, I've obsessed over tone in the past, but most of the time, the perceived tone that you're hearing on pro records has a lot more to do with the playing, again, the editing and the arrangement of the production than the actual guitar tone itself. As a matter of fact, I filmed a video on this topic where I dove deep into a subscriber's guitar tone, and it turns out his tone was actually good, it's just he wasn't focusing on the right things. If you'd like to check out that video, I'll leave a link below in this video's description where you could see exactly what I'm talking about, and hopefully it will help shine light on this topic for you, so you yourself don't get caught in this very, very annoying trap. And again, if you're having issues achieving that pro-level result that you're looking for in your home studio, and you happen to be a home studio owner that utilizes MIDI drums and amp sims exclusively, you could have direct access to my MIDI drums and amp sims production checklist for absolutely free. So you can clearly see the common mistakes that we all fall victim to. So you can skip them and get to producing better sounding music within your home studio with the gear that you're currently using and the MIDI drums and amp sims that you currently use in your DAW. So I'm curious to know, do you suffer from these issues when it comes to using amp sims in your productions? I know most of you do, so be honest, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'd love to hear your story. My goal here on YouTube is to help people produce their music and finally get it out there, finally achieve that pro level result that we're all capable of, especially because the tools that we utilize are so powerful these days. I want you to control the tools. I don't want the tools controlling you. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. Until next time, happy mixing.